y'all today we got the truth about record labels and how record labels really work now i want to know this because personally i do music is that republic records presented to republic records to commit come on come on commit come worldwide stay in school stay in school please is, Let's get many it. kids grow up idolizing their favorite artists praying that one day they can get signed to and become successful artists with a life that seems to come pre-packaged bird, with man? fame, money, and women, most artists can only dream of getting their music to record labels. And how could you blame them? Not many people would turn down an opportunity. I will not. Record labels are important because record labels are a machine. A machine is what keeps you going, what keeps you popping like that, what keeps you on the front page. You need a machine to make it nowadays. Why do you think Young Boy on the front page? Why do you think Young Boy is always promoted and Young Boy is going crazy? He got all these numbers. It's a machine behind you. And it creates a fan base for you that's unimaginable. I'm telling y'all, bro, it's a machine, bro. All these niggas got machines. That could provide financial freedom, women, and most importantly, fame. What if I told And a lot of these niggas, bro, they have a boss. These niggas y'all look up to, they have a boss. They have a nigga they answer to. Exactly what record labels wanted you to believe. That this is, for the most part, was an illusion used to lure young talent in so they can trap them. From manipulating artists to deceiving the public and even profiting off murder, record labels are far more dark than you could ever expect them to be. Join me in this episode as we uncover the dark truth about record labels. Since the beginning of the music industry, record labels have had two reputations. One, that if you get signed, Possible. you're rich and famous. And two, that record labels are evil and out to rob the artists. Now both of these could be true, just not for all artists. A record deal is nothing more than a sketchy loan you would get from a loan shark. They have designed it to always lean you in You gotta pay that bitch back. That's the only thing niggas don't understand. Record label is just funding you money to promote yourself and get you out there. So it's basically somebody giving you money. Say, hey, I'll give you the money. Go ahead and promote yourself. Get, get fly, get the outfits, all you need, everything you need. We'll push your music out there. But we, we, we need the money back in return. It's just getting, you, you're just using their money to go go crazy. And you, it's like a bartering. It's, it's bartering trade. That's what it is. Favor, giving them That's the to advantage over the artist. The way a record deal works is complicated for artists to understand. That's why they have lawyers. But to simplify it, in most cases, a record deal is a loan given to an artist so that an artist can produce a highly desirable body of work so they can sell it, and the profit from such body of work can pay back the loan given by the record label and any other expenses. Whatever's left then gets split between the record label and the artist. So if you're signed tomorrow to a $2 million deal, it does not mean you're receiving $2 million. This actually means you're being lent this amount of money throughout the duration of your contract. When you first sign, you will receive yep. an advance. You get lent that money, go get your studio time. Go, no, not, not your studio time, go get some good equipment. Go get some, make sure your shit is high quality. After that, pay for the videos you need. The video's done, get you some fits, all that, bro. But it's all to go into music. That's what this money is going in for, is to promote yourself and push yourself to that level. So you can get more bread. Usually a good chunk of money that can wow an artist who has never seen such an amount. This is given to trap the artist as they know that artists are going to spend this putting themselves in debt. The record label even encourages the artist to spend the advance, advising them to use the money to move, buy expensive clothing and vehicles, telling them that it will improve their image. This is the beginning of the trapping cycle. You need to improve your image, but in a certain way. Like, that's why I don't want to go out and buy Balenciaga and Prada and all that bullshit. Nigga, I go to the store, put some shit together, make it look nice. Yeah, that's my image, my do-rag. Keep that motherfucker on, bro. I don't need no change now, shit. But you got to get an image, though. Image is important. You need an image, and then you need to go ahead and promote yourself. Put yourself on the front pages. Now an artist is in debt. Your deal was worth $2 million. Let's say the record label gives you an advance of 500000 You now have left $1.5 million, but you technically owe the record label 500000 before any money had been spent on any production of your music. Now you hit the studio to start making some hits. You're then taken to a recording studio of the best quality, costing about $120 to $300 an hour. The label will book this room for a week or even a few months, all of this coming out of your remaining $1.5 million. Let's say it costs That's you why another I don't, 200000 I want to engineer my own stuff, and I do it right now, bro. There's it, no point of going to the studio no more, bro. Going to the studio makes no sense. You paying, you paying how many much money, right? When you can go, get the same equipment. 
the same stuff. Make stuff in your crib. Tusi did it. T Pain did it. R- Russ did it. Young boy does it. Make the songs in your crib instead of wasting your money on studio time, bro. Studio time is irrelevant nowadays, bro. Learn how to mix. Get a template set to you. Get a template set for your voice. Get it sent to you and do it at your house. All you need, make your own studio, bro. Save Just money. Just on studio time to complete your album. Now you're left with 1.3 million, and now you owe 700,000. Now, in order to make a hit song, you need a hit beat, and in some cases, a whole song from a ghostwriter. So labels will contact hit producers and writers who can charge anywhere from 25,000 to 500,000 per beat. Let's say you spent another 300,000 on beats. You're now left with $1 million, but you're in debt for $1 million. 300,000 on beats? That's how much these niggas be paying? Damn! After you make yourself some hit records, the label is gonna need to promote your music. Even though they told you to spend your advance money on clothes and jewelry and expensive cars, that all might look nice and feel great to own, but it doesn't build the brand or sell any record. Artists need marketing to sell records, Mark- so yeah. record labels assign marketing teams to the artists. A marketing team then goes on to strategically map out ways to build more clout for the artists. They will start paying playlist owners to play an artist's music on top of the streaming playlist, spending around 250000 to get an artist placed on the best Spotify playlist. Then they contact radio stations. Since paying the stations to play an artist's song is illegal, they find their way around this. A record label will buy a certain amount of commercial ad space on a radio station. This covers up how they pay the radio stations to play the artist's music. Yep. So now let's say that a record label gives a radio all right, boss. These are the Get top the views, of the line all that shit, bro. systems we can choose from. This shit Each comes beat, with voice, video, radio station, 200K to throw your song in rotation at the best hours and promote your upcoming live events. You're now at 550K and you're now in debt $1.5 million. Now, the entire time you were making music and being creative, you had a team and a manager behind the scenes working endless hours making things happen. All of those people are being paid by you, even if you don't know it. Let's say you pay your staff another 200,000 and are now left with 300K and you're in debt 1.7 million. Now that you're going a buzz and your song starts to pick up steam, artists are going to want to start touring. This requires travel expenses and hotel expenses. Since you're now famous, you have to now live up to a high life image. Artists will start to fry private and this can cost anywhere from 20,000 a flight to 50,000 a flight. When they land- 50,000 a flight? No, you you catch me on a regular flight. Hey, what's up, fans? I <laughs> say what's up. I'm not doing that. Two hundred thousand? No, no, no. Twenty thousand a flight to fifty thousand? Crazy. And they have to stay at the best hotels and the most expensive rooms. The label will also need to rent and customize a tour bus. All this could actually cost tons of money. Let's say on the low end, five hundred thousand. Now you actually went over your initial budget with two hundred thousand, leaving you in a grand total debt of two point two million. Now, this is the part where artists say, well, it's all worth it because I'm going to blow up and make that money back and make more money than what I owe and get rich. The thing is, it's not as easy as it sounds. Yep. Let's say you're lucky and you happen to land the record on the charts and the song becomes a hit. People are streaming your song nonstop and your song is all over the airway. Let's say your song makes $3 million. Before you could even think of touching any of that money, the record label needs to recoup their money back first. The $2.2 million you owe gets deducted now and there's $800,000 left. Most people think that the artists sign deals and get a good percentage on their royalties. But in most cases, unless you're an established act, your royalty split looks around the lines of under 8 Alti, I'm making a video. percent for some artists going as low as four percent meaning that an artist will only see four to eight percent of the profit made so let's say the label was feeling generous when they signed you and gave you eight percent you will make a grand total of sixty four thousand while the record label pockets the remaining seven hundred and thirty six thousand now you might ask yourself don't artists get to keep all their show money this is not completely true see labels tend to sign artists to different type of deals and new artists usually sign to 360 deals a 360 deal basically means that a label will be able to profit off anything an artist does associated with music. Meaning that a label can take a cut of any shows alongside other expenses that come with touring. 
leaving big name artists in difficult financial position. More often than oh, not, leading I these so money. is to re-signing again to the same label for more advanced money. Hold on, buddy. This is how they trap an artist. An artist takes more money and gets back into more debt. Now okay. the labels control the artist through financial ways, they also do it I in a like more direct jacket. way. Often sculpting artists to fit a general mold, packaging them, and shipping them off as if they were a product. Labels will control what artists say and can't say. They will dress them with the brands they can wear and even how they can wear it. Also, they can manipulate the fans. See, record labels know if they have complete control of the artist, they could use that to manipulate the fans. They can push agendas through artists and promote products and sell an entire lifestyle. These record labels have sinister motives behind what they do. Often than not, pushing satanic values through music yeah, of the biggest man, artists. Yeah, that shit was nasty. That shit was, that, no. That shit, no, I hated that shit. Artists that shit, will do that anything whole satan to Is that ASAP Rocky doing satanic shit? What the fuck? Is that Rihanna's boyfriend? Live the dream life that when they're signed, they themselves are selling. When we are young, we watch artists on TV live such admirable lives. This is the way that labels program us to want to buy from them or sign to them. If you're a fan, then you would take artists more serious if they're successful and famous. And there's some people even motivating them to make similar life decisions. If you're an artist, then you would look at these labels as your ticket into the music industry. The only way you can make it big. That's exactly what record labels want you to believe. They need you to think that signing to them will be the only way you can succeed. In reality, it it's the other way around. If the record labels don't have any artists, they wouldn't make any money. So they have to sign artists in order to get paid. But if they were to be fair to every artist they sign, then record label executives wouldn't make hundreds of millions of dollars a year. So they had to find a way to make artists want to sign to them for little financial gain. Back in the day, this was much easier to do due to the fact that the internet didn't exist, nor did our current technology. So upcoming artists needed the record label's money and resources for studio time and marketing. Now with the internet, it's a lot harder for labels to continue to use this as leverage, so they use already signed artists as walking billboards to attract new acts to sign bad deals. Yep. Upcoming artists... You don't need a record label nowadays, bro. You don't need that studio time, bro. All you need is to make a studio in your crib. And you can get that same quality sound, bro. You don't even need to buy a hell of plugins. I use stock plugins now. I don't even use... All the fancy plugins you gotta go ahead and buy, bro. I don't do that, bro. My shit still sound like a high quality, bro. Seeing other established Tell acts, you. situation, and lifestyles persuade them to signing these deals. Where things get even darker is when an artist sadly passes away. Believe it or not, record labels actually love this. Seeing this as an opportunity to make even more money. Since when an artist dies, it reignites their career, leading record labels to make more money. You often see record labels trying to capitalize off dead artists. See with the case of Juice Pause World, after he passed, his record label has been accused of using Juice World's name to build hype for other artists. They have released songs with a recycled Juice World verse packaged as a new feature on a Kid Leroy song, using Juice World's name to promote Leroy's music to Juice's fans, hoping some of them will cross over. The record labels have controlled the music industry oh, since the beginning, setting the rules in their favor that and might be true, the game so they can always win. Leaving artists but they do read the game a lot. with their careers. The label uses the artists to promote brands that suit investors. They use the artists to sell you a lifestyle that they can control you with. Then, when an artist has no more attention from their fans, they drop them. I'm not advising yep. all artists not to sign to a record label. What I am simply stating that it is not what it looks like. If you're going to sign to a record deal, make sure it's the right one. When you do get an advance, yeah, make sure it's a deal that makes the most sense. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you're comfortable with your deal, bro. I'm telling you, these niggas will scam your ass, bro. These niggas will scam your ass, bro. And they some high, they, they some, they the elites. We gonna call them the elites. I ain't gonna lie to you. But yeah, man, hopefully you enjoy this reaction, man. I gotta go help my mom with the groceries. But hopefully you enjoy, man. I love y'all. I'm out. Hopefully you know how this shit go.